high-end MBA program from all the top universities that are offering it. You can make your own MBA program and do it for less than a thousand dollars, right? From Stanford, Chicago, all the best schools. You might not have the official qualification, but you can have the knowledge. So while revenue is about four billion dollars, and uh, employees are more productive than Microsoft uh, in terms of revenue per. Um, and Zappo is doing the same thing, and so is ING Direct. And Aaron, a very interesting thing at Singularity uh, lecture that I heard yesterday was that apparently the whole Steve Blank lean startup stuff does not work for startups. <laughs> it only works for mid sized to large companies. So that's a rethink. The other thing for Singularity University, the reason why it's not an accredited university is because 50% of the curriculum is changed every year, at least 50%. Uh, they used to teach a lean startup stuff last year. And now they found out that it doesn't actually work, so the guy is gone. So Eric Ries, the, the top guy, you know, is actually a faculty head for the entrepreneurship. I think this year he'll be gone. So it's a very dynamic program. There's no university like that. You know, like you, you know, everything changes. Every, you know, like I myself, like, wow. You know, I thought like this was the thing that we should be looking at, but apparently it's not. Things are changing so fast, and it's really, really dynamic, dynamic in that sense. Uh, quirky. You know, I'm not sure if you're about quirky. And another thing I learned yesterday. Quirky is uh, basically a design um, a, a company that allows you to take your idea. It's actually good for you, um, Fraser, because it takes your idea into the solution into Walmart from 300 days for a normal product to 28 days. So it goes through this process where you know you can go in there and decide whether this is a product that you want to support or not, and then they actually get into the marketplace very quickly. So check it out if you haven't heard about it, because I haven't heard about it yesterday. So that was a really interesting uh, uh, concept. So anybody with a great idea or make a fantastic hose or a fantastic uh, watering can or whatever it is, you know, you could basically put it out to the, into the social media and see if anybody bites and then if it's, it's really good and it goes on to the next stage and so forth and then the, the, the production and then into, uh, because the cost of doing business, of setting up business is very, very low. Okay, I mean, in the old days, it cost you a lot of money to actually set up a company. Today, you could do it for less than hundred dollars. So Eric Reeves actually gave a talk uh, I think on some of the, I'm not sure it's on YouTube or uh, was actually on Jimmy uh, uh channel. Um, he talks about how uh, he was asked to go and talk to uh, Coca Cola because Coca Cola still wanted to Kodak, right? Kodak was a big multinational corporation, right? 50 or 100,000 people at its peak, right? And it's bankrupt now. Instagram, 12 people, $1.3 billion. So the world has changed. Kodak invented digital camera, but could not basically see that it was a disruptive technology, it was exponential technology, they thought it was a toy, and it didn't give a you know, give a hoot about it, and basically they were gone. So Coca-Cola hired Eric Ries and wanted him to talk to them about, you know, what should Coca-Cola be afraid of in this new world. So Eric Ries gave an example of how at Harvard University now, the capstone program before you graduate from the MBA program. Every grad, every graded student is given hundred dollars to go set up a company. Hundred bucks, that's all you have. And then you got to present it to a whole bunch of venture guys and so forth at the end of it. So Eric went to see this um, demo, and a guy came up and gave him a soft drink. I gave him a drink, a juice drink or something. And he said, "Well, what's your product? Since you're holding it, this guy created a uh, organic juice company for less than hundred dollars. But his friend drew a website up for him. You know, he got some orders from a local Boston company that was doing it. And Eric said." Coke, well, that's what you should be afraid of, your competitor. So Coke said, you must be kidding me, right? You know, we are a multi-billion dollar company. We compete with the likes of Pepsi. We don't care about small companies like this. They grow big enough, we buy them up. It's a long franchise, right? It's now owned by Coke. So, <laughs> but Eric said, think about it, right? This guy created a company that made a dream that basically replaced the Coke for less than $100. Now imagine 100,000 people around the world do the same thing. What are you going to do? Buy everybody up? So that's the problem, right? So there's now a new mantra you know, that says that if you don't disrupt your business, somebody will disrupt it for you. So it is so cheap now to set up a business to actually do that. Uh, this is not this first example of quirky. So just to leave you some parting thoughts, like Folded, right? You guys heard of Folded? That's some of you were in my talk before. So Folded was one of the first gamification ideas for crowdsourcing. It was basically developed by people at the University of Washington who are trying to find a way to fold proteins so that they can actually find a cure for HIV. If you can fold protein in such a way you can insert it into an HIV virus and kill it. The problem is folding the protein is 
a very complex process, a bit like a Rubik's Cube puzzle. Humans are very good at it, computers are not. They spent $12 million in 18 months, couldn't find a solution. Somebody had a bright idea and said, well, why don't we put it on the web, make it do a game, teach them how, what the basic folding principles are and see who can do it. So now the world best protein folder is not a graduate, she's not a medical researcher, she's a personal assistant in London. So technology has enabled somebody with no background in medicine or any areas to actually maybe be a person that finds a cure for HIV. So this is why I'm trying to reach out to you, right? Because the old way of thinking, like, go to a great, you know, and I think already inspired me, I'm going to share with you when I was in Malaysia and gave that TED Talk. I was very touched by this story in the paper that said a PhD graduate from Cambridge University in Malaysia committed suicide because he couldn't find a job. Can you imagine? I mean, you know, like, did all the right things, right? Went to the best school, got the best grades, I went to the best university in the world. I mean, you know, previously, if you had a PhD from Cambridge, BP Shell or wherever it was grad. So he couldn't find a decent paying job, you know, and he was met by his parents and he basically committed suicide. It's a really sad thing because I have a feeling that, you know, there's so much more things we can do if we're able to uh, see beyond the uh, kind of uh, paradigm that we have right now, which is, you know, go to a good school, study hard, do well, you get a good job, that's over. You know, because if you can be replaced by a machine, you will be replaced by a machine. You can be looking at the next step. That's why I said you should learn entrepreneurial skills, not because you're going to be an entrepreneur, but you need to know how to survive. So this is Mark McConkin, a friend of mine, and I've been mentoring him. Yeah, he's a comedian, professional comedian. He was runners up for the competition uh, because uh, his idea was to basically use comedy to prevent suicide uh, in the workplace. Uh, but that was a pretty cool idea. I mean, you know, in terms of uh, because I, he, you know, he knows people stuff like this. I mean, I didn't even know, like for example, tow truck drivers are one of the most stressed people in the world, right? Because they're the first at the accident scene. But there's no, there is no, uh, uh, you know. There is no support mechanism for them, so he wanted to, you know, basically use comedy to uh, help people. So I'll leave you a parting message. Uh, Larry Page from Google. He basically talked about, you know, are you looking for something to change the world? You know, yes or no? You know, 99.99% of people say no. You know, so go out and change the world and impact a billion people. Well, thank you. Check my blog if you want to find more.